I'm naive. Welcome. We're here in downtown Hartford, uh, and we're bringing to you uh, this special report called The Audit. Uh, we're in the capital city of Connecticut, Hartford, uh, and uh, Connecticut has unfortunately received, for all intents and purposes, a dubious distinction of being a place where uh, corruption and uh, malfeasance seems to be uh, unfortunately all too regular. Uh, we uh, want to shed some light, if you will, on uh, why it is that uh, those, seem, those things seem to, to be uh, occurring. Uh, we are not passing judgment here. Uh, we are here to talk about uh, the information that we, we will be getting firsthand uh, from uh, one of those people who uh, is responsible for uh, overseeing uh, those administrative tasks, uh, the operations uh, of city government, uh, so that uh, you, the viewer, can make the decisions for yourself uh, based upon the facts, uh, based upon uh, what you will hear uh, during this report. We have uh, with us a gentleman who has consented to, to share with us uh, information about what's taking place in City Hall. Uh, that gentleman is a gentleman by the name of uh, Bruce Rubenstein. Bruce, uh, I believe, is an attorney by uh, trade, if you will, uh, and uh, frankly, a, a political uh, uh, scholar, if you will. Uh, he has made himself uh, a reputation that precedes him. Uh, he has uh, been at the forefront of a number of very uh, high-profile elections. Uh, uh, one of the first people to, to stand up and support uh, the first African-American mayor, uh, female mayor of the city of Hartford. <clears throat> also, he was uh, a huge, huge uh, supporter of the state treasurer, our own very own state treasurer, Denise Napier, who is the first female African-American treasurer, state treasurer in this country. So Bruce, uh, again, his reputation precedes him, uh, and ha he has consented to, to be with us this morning because he's also continuing his public service by being a part of the commission that oversees the audit of city government in our capital city. Uh, good morning, Bruce. Good morning. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Good. Thank you so much for consenting <clears throat> to be here this morning. I, I want you to, if you will, share with us uh, how many audits, if you will, take place uh, within uh, any given year um, to sort of uh, make certain that the kinds of functions that city government is responsible for doing and carrying out are actually uh, in compliance, if you will. Right. Uh, the um, IAD, Internal Audit Department, is, uh, was created by the charter under the strong mayor form in 2002. Uh, <clears throat> so it's been uh, online and working for the last 11 years. Right now, presently, there's about eight auditors, most of whom are CPAs, certainly all of whom are adept in financial affairs, <clears throat> and they are the ones that actually do the various audits. 
Overseeing them are three paternal audit commissioners, and I'm one of them. Um, I was selected or appointed by Treasurer Adam Cloud, uh, and we oversee the IAD. The IAD, the Eternal Audit Division, is uh, an independent board. We do not report to the mayor. We do not report to the COO. We're completely independent by charter. And uh, they, nobody at City Hall can uh, mess with us with respect to the uh, budget for the uh, internal audit department. <clears throat> so we're completely independent. We do, Mr. Russell, uh, um, Mr. Williams, probably about 20 to 25 audits generically a year for the various city departments. Then we also get requests uh, by various entities like uh, the council. Uh, uh, Sean um, asked us to do, the president of the council, uh, asked us to um, uh, audit uh, the P-cards, and that's how we got involved with the P-cards uh, of, a, of a few months ago. Yeah. Well, um, if I can digress for just a moment, you uh, mentioned that you were chosen to serve on that commission by uh, the city treasurer. Uh, and I, I would uh, presume that uh, the other commissioners are also selected, if you will, uh, by an officer uh, of the city. Is that is that the case? Um, not, there are three internal audit commissioners. Uh, one is selected by the treasurer, and I was. Okay. That's a direct appointment. I don't okay. have to be ratified by the council. Okay. Another appointment is by the council themselves, and that has to go through the council. Uh -huh. And if you get five out of the nine votes, you're in. Mm -hmm. That position now is vacant. Um, and the other position is the 10 largest taxpayers through the Metro Alliance select somebody, uh, and that name goes to the council and they uh, ratify that or not, as the case may be. Right now, um, there is a vacancy uh, for a council appointment. Um, since I'm a Democrat, and the other person that's presently on is a Democrat, um, the um, appointment that the council can fill must be somebody other than a Democrat. Mm -hmm. Now, it's obviously very important that you guys have your autonomy uh, because without that autonomy, obviously, uh, there's a potential for uh, interference, for lack of a better way of, of putting it, right. uh, when it comes to uh, you know, gathering the information that you <laughs> gather and uh, actually uh, doing something about whatever the information uh, you gather uh, suggests that you you do. Is that is that the case? That's uh, absolutely the case. Uh, and also, too, Mr. Williams, uh, <clears throat> the charter gives us the power to not only audit an agency, but let's say we found some sort of malfeasance or criminality we have the power to refer that directly without seeking approval from anyone to the authorities. Mm. So if we found criminality in a particular department, we have the ability to be able to refer that matter to the state mm. chief state's attorney or Hartford PD. Uh, we also have the power and the authority to refer matter to ethics, uh, like we did with Councilman Aponte a few months ago, mm. where we found reasonable cause to believe that he committed an ethics violation. We referred that to the Ethics Commission, and we also have the right and the power <coughs> for administrative remedies. So if we found somebody was um, falling down on the job or committing some kind of malfeasance, we have the ability to be able to uh, refer the matter to the Human Relations Department uh, for termination or suspension. Yeah, I want to get into some of the specifics uh, that we have been obviously reading about and some that we've heard about. Uh, those two particular incidents you pointed out, uh, Councilman Aponte uh, and the audit that uh, uh, we've been continuing to read about that deals with the P cards uh, in the, in the, uh, within city government. I can't help but think that, um, you know, we're, we're now 
uh, those things are now being revealed, but you can't help but wonder how long or how far back uh, your audits could potentially go uh, when it comes to dealing with uh, particular issues that uh, that surface that have surfaced now. The P cards themselves, there was an audit, I'm going to say three or four years ago, uh, when Eddie Perez was mayor, where they found that there was some malfeasance over the cards. But to the best of my recollection and belief, Mr. Williams, nothing was done about it. I think the audit came out and said that there were a number of uh, folks misusing the cards. Mm -hmm. But I don't remember anything significant um, that, was, that was done with the P cards. In our audit, we went back a year. We found uh, significant problems with the cards. We sent it on to council with a request, or at least I sent it to the council with my request that uh, the council look at it, transfer it, uh, refer it to a chief state's attorney. And to the best of my recollection and belief, it was transferred uh, the other day uh, voluntarily by uh, uh, the mayor and the president of the council. Well, it's, in that case, you're saying that it is within your discretion as the, uh, the commission and uh, as a part of the audit uh, team, if you will, to suggest or to recommend remedies, corrective action, or whatever it is that needs to take place. Yes. Um, um, in this particular instance with the the uh, P cards, uh, we sent it, uh, we issue a report. The report goes to the mayor, the council, uh, the city treasurer, uh, the public auditors, uh, and others. Uh, and uh, we made a, a recommendation, I made the recommendation that the, um, because of the pattern of and practice of the malfeasance of the cards that they be transferred for an investigation by the chief state's attorney. And I'm happy to see that uh, they responded. They responded in a positive way. Mm. And the president of the council and the mayor on their own uh, voluntarily sent it to the chief state's attorney who will give it a thorough look on behalf of the citizens. So in <clears throat> your estimation and in the estimation of those who work for uh, the audit, uh, work in the audit department, uh, there is deliberate, something deliberately uh, being done uh, to uh, undermine, if you will, or to um, <clears throat> not adhere to uh, the policies and or, or regulations that um, are required for the use of those P cards. Yeah, I mean, I think there were enough people that committed a pattern of practice where the cards were uh, routinely used in a, in a um, uh, negligent way. Uh, for instance, the former chief of staff, I think, used his P card and got his um, bills paid, uh, I'm going to say 30 times without backup. Uh, uh, the P cards were supposed to be monitored by his bills. You don't mean personal bills. You mean <coughs> expenses that he would have incurred right. as a part of the work that he's doing for the city? Or, right. Or, okay. Right. His, okay. And they were paid routinely without backup by the finance department. Uh, the finance department is headed by uh, uh, finance uh, department manager named Julio Melita, and uh, these bills were paid without backup, and we certainly objected to it, investigated it, and uh, made and forced uh, the former chief of staff to come up with the uh, receipts uh, needed. But there are other actors and other instances where people would travel, they would be um, mandated to fill out a travel expense report listing where you went, right. what meals, sure. and then we routinely wouldn't fill that out. <clears throat> so when you do something like that with a P card or travel expense vouchers, and you don't fill it out and don't comport to the rules and regulations, and you build up a pattern in the practice, to me that's uh, wrong and might be evidence of criminality. Well, but but it doesn't it beg the question that if he's a new staffer, somebody <laughs> who's kind of new to sit, the city hall, that he's uh, being uh, somehow uh, given instructions or 
or some somebody is is hopefully helping him navigate through that process. Um, <clears throat> it wouldn't that be the case, or did he just come <clears throat> in and just decide that he was going to do what he wanted to do, uh, <laughs> despite what uh, others may have suggested? Well, if, you t if you're talking about the former chief of staff, the audit revealed, <clears throat> excuse me, that the mayor was uh, monitoring his uh, P card performance every month. Uh, but we found the case to be that if he was, he was monitoring it in a very negligent way um, um, because of the so many discrepancies and so many transactions without without the backup. And I, to me. Uh, I, it's inconceivable to me that a chief of staff would be get, would be so directionless. It, um, I've been actively involved with mayors um, from uh, Thurman Milner to the present mayor, mm -hmm. and uh, not one of the chiefs of staff for any of the four or five mayors that I've been involved with ever took that job without direction and without uh, some guidelines. Well, that's what I would think too. That's why I'm I'm wondering <laughs> why isn't there somebody in finance or in uh, somebody who handles uh, you know uh, the mayor's staff? And I'm sure the mayor is responsible for you know more or less being in charge of uh, providing leadership for his staff. But somebody should be helping them to navigate through those waters. And it would seem to me that the audit would be able to determine whether or not he had gotten that kind of assistance or not as well. well, is, well that, is, it, is it the case that he didn't, mm -hmm. and because you, you said direction less, so I'm presuming that mm -hmm. uh, he, uh, at least based upon what you've been able to find so far from the audit, is that he did do what he did without any direction and without any uh, necessary uh, uh, guidance, if you will, through that process. The, <clears throat> the PCARD audit revealed that the three departments that committed most of the errors yeah. was the mayor's office, the COO's office, and the corporation council's office. So the leaders of the city were not providing the guidance and the direction needed to uh, subordinate staff to uh, allow them to use their PCARDs in a prop proper manner. Now might be different since there was so much media attention on the P cards <clears throat> that the um, um, and so much attention paid to to them uh, that I think hopefully the things have changed and the cards uh, can be managed in a responsible manner. And I seem to remember the mayor also came out with a new position to ban, <laughs> I think, ban um, certain meals and liquor and stuff like that. We're banned. Mm. This is uh, extraordinary, if you ask me. Uh, you know, uh, lapse in judgment, um, you know, comes to mind. But mm. actually, I think it goes even further than that. It seems like it's almost uh, pervasive uh, within uh, city hall and within <clears throat> within government at this point. Because you just said, if, and correct me if I'm wrong. You just said the CEO, who is the mayor, the CEO of the city, the COO, the chief operating officer who reports directly to the mayor, who is responsible for operations of the city on a day-to-day -day basis, and the corporation council's office, all three with probably uh, a, an equal amount of responsibility uh, to the balance of uh, of to the balance of power within City Hall, at least, uh, somehow they're not providing the kind of direction, they're not providing the kind of, of support uh, for the staff that's necessary for them to, to do even the day-to-day -day functions within City Hall? Is that what you're saying? <clears throat> no. What I'm saying is <laughs> okay. that, what I'm saying is the P-card errors most of the errors were that there wasn't proper backup for payment of P card bills for okay. the finance department. Okay. Were committed in those three departments. Uh, and the audit says it. So I'm not saying anything new. 
And uh, what I'm saying is I think the mayor addressed some of this by uh, changing the policy, making it impossible or hard to have even a P-card expense for food now. And the liquor was banned <clears throat> before. So he's, he's taken some remedies. We will audit the P-cards in due course in the future. But allegedly, the uh, um, instances of P-card misuse hopefully will be uh, negligent or, or done or none uh, going uh, forward. Okay, but Commissioner Rubenstein, you just you just said that those three areas within the city, <clears throat> right? Th those is where the audits have led you to find out information about the the use of these P cards and right. the expenses, right. you know, <laughs> that are being. Uh, those things that are being expensed by employees for the city. Right. So if it's in those three areas. Right. That's where the areas. That's those, where the problems were. Those were mostly. The problem. Yeah. So wouldn't that also uh, <clears throat> wouldn't that also suggest that the management of those departments, the those people who are responsible for the functions of those departments, because they are responsible for day to day functions within those departments. Are not providing the proper leadership, and they're not doing the proper supervision within those departments if they've allowed this kind of thing to fester. That would be a fair comment. I mean, I think that they pro didn't provide proper leadership for the P card management and within their respective departments. Okay. Yes. Okay. So if that's the <coughs> if that's the case, what else is going on in City Hall? I mean, because you got to ask the question: if we're not if we're not keeping track of of you know things that happen routinely or supposedly happen routinely in the uh, functions of those departments, you know, what are other things do those twenty five audits that you guys do on a on a yearly basis? What other things has uh, has it has have surfaced? Have have there been any other things other than the than the P cards? That we're not hearing about um, any audit that we've undertaken within my time frame on the uh, uh, internal audit commission has been public, and you have heard about it. We recently had um, been asked to um, undertake an audit of the uh, city cars. Okay. By uh, sh by Council President Sean Wooden and the council mm -hmm. requested us to do that. We're knee deep in the audit now. <clears throat> we'll have it done at his request by uh, September 30th, and then. And that was triggered it. by uh, the uh, Kupiak, the, the former chief of staff's uh, mishandling of, of one of the city vehicles. Is that what triggered that audit? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then uh, Council President Wooden uh, asked us to uh, do an audit of the cars. Uh, by September 30th, and we're sort of in the middle of it now. Uh, that will be revealed, and mm -hmm. that'll be public. Mm -hmm. uh, when we may, when we'll hopefully, uh, we may have recommendations with respect to the cars. Uh, we're also in the middle of, a, of another audit involving Keeney Park, mm -hmm. where there are allegations that there are trees missing, that uh, the lessee of the golf course uh, um, may have. Uh, taken the trees down uh, and sold uh, the trees for revenue, thereby defacing a lovely historic park mm. in the north end of Hartford mm. uh, for a long time mm. because these mm. trees are very old and very big. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in the middle of that audit too, <clears throat> and we have had recently finished audits in two involving the uh, finance department, which found a lot of negligence in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of which, uh, both of which had editorials in the Hartford Current. One, of course, was yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, saying that uh, basically uh, um, the car's motor is knocking and it needs repair. Meaning, and that was an analogy that the car was the finance <laughs> department that needed uh, needed uh, repair. Uh, and there were failure to file tax returns. 941 quarterly tax returns and 945, both federal and state, for a few years uh, <clears throat> when 
there, there, there was, I think, 150 bounced checks, people that paid the city for one thing or another. Right. And the checks bounced, came back to the finance department, and they neglected to go after these people to get the pay. Wow. And overpayments of cops, overpayments of employees. Somebody got a $10,000 overpayment months, many months ago, and they still haven't collected it. Wow. It's that kind of negligence <clears throat> that uh, bespeaks of uh, fundamental change needed in the city department. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, again, you know, I couldn't help but, uh, <laughs> you know, imagine that if something routinely as uh, monitoring expense accounts gets by those people who run those departments, you can't help but but believe that there are other things that are happening within the city government and within the administration that, uh, you know, are not being uh, given the proper attention to as well. I'm a, I'm a compliance guy. You know, I actually serve myself, you know, as a compliance guy with the Commission on Human Rights and Opportunities at the states for a number of years. And I happen to also know that the city has a a compliance responsibility when it comes to vendors. Uh, people who uh, do work for the city are supposed to, uh, I, I think it's still considered a set aside, are still supposed to give 20 or 25% or something like that of their contracts, if you will, uh, to uh, minorities, especially those who people who uh, you know, our businesses who reside within the city of Harper. Has anybody talked to the audits, the auditors about uh, making sure that, that, that they're in compliance, that vendors uh, are in compliance with uh, uh, <clears throat> those city rules and regulations? Nobody has asked us to audit um, the vendors within the city with respect to minority uh, compliance. If they do, if they have an interest, they should contact Nobody on the city council has said anything to, to <clears throat> you or to the audit department about making sure that compliance is being satisfied when it comes to city vendors. No, because, okay. because the, as I understand it, the compliance factor is supposedly done by HR and other departments to make sure that the city is in compliance with certain state, local state, and federal law as to minority vendors. Mm -hmm. Now, having said that, if there is a special program, let's say a school building, uh, the council can ask us to audit the construction aspects of, let's say, Hartford High mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. to check and see to make sure that the job uh, and the city's end is being done in a manner that uh, no one's breaking the law as to minority contractors, and we'd be glad to do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, <coughs> I, I, I have to get back to some of the things that you you found in some of the audits, like the overpayments, and uh, you know what is what is the typical corrective action? What's what's the uh, you know how do you handle the remedy? Who who ensures that the remedies are satisfied? We do. <coughs> um, we've. Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> We've uh, recommended certain actions um, with regard to the overpayments that they be more vigorous. There's a monitoring process. Our requests also go to uh, M and B management and budget, um, and they will monitor it with us and with the COO to make sure that there is compliance and that it's uh, and it's done. We've entertained agreements with, for instance, the finance department that they will take corrective action by September 30th on some of the ma matters that I've just discussed with you this morning. And on another audit involving um, another audit involving the same department uh, um, for a different matter, uh, that'll be in October. So uh, the department head of finance has certain agreed upon remedies that he must correct uh, by September 30th and by October 31st. Can <clears throat> you, you, the commission, if you will, and or the audit department, can you go as far as even recommending the removal 
of certain employees, certain people yes. within. Oh, you can. Yes. Because of an ineptitude and <clears throat> uh, in in an inability to perform certain duties. Yes. We uh, had a situation um, with an, a City Hall employee that we thought was not doing the job, and we recommended uh, um, dismissal. Uh, we recommended uh, employee action and sent it back to the department head for uh, action. Mm -hmm. So we do have the ability to do that. Well, this is a very <laughs> powerful, very, very powerful commission and very necessary one. I, I would, I think most would agree, uh, accountability uh, and transparency seems to be, if you will, the mantra uh, of uh, the, some would say, the democratic platform, if you will. Uh, you know, others uh, may see it has a bit of an intrusion or micromanaging, but uh, <clears throat> I think that this, uh, this kind of work really um, serves the, the, the general public well. Uh, frankly, I believe that the first goal of government is really justice, is making sure that everybody uh, is treated fairly. And it would seem to me that there's too much being left out, uh, Commissioner Rubenstein, and there's too much that the general public is unaware of uh, that, that happens within City Hall. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. I do. I, I, I think because um, because Hartford's a poor city, uh, because Hartford's a diverse city, uh, and because uh, uh, Har people have to work in order to feed the families, often with two or three jobs, they don't have the time to investigate issues and matters before city government that you and I uh, would, would, would monitor routinely. Uh, so the, I think it's very vital and very important that the word get out about City Hall and what City Hall is doing, both the positive and the negative, to those folks so that they can uh, fully participate in the affairs of the, of the government. Well, the city of Hartford, <coughs> as, as poor it's, as it's supposed to be, if you will, uh, at least per capita income, uh, has approximately a billion dollar budget, isn't it? I know there's almost a half a billion dollars that goes to the school itself, to the school system, uh, and there's almost, is there another half a billion, or are my numbers off? Is there, is there, is, is it something other than that? Something other than that. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll share with the, <coughs> what, the, what the actual budget of the city of um, Hartford is. I'm going to say, I'm going to be very close here, um, somewhere around 550 million. Okay. is the actual budget of which approximately a little more than a half goes to the school board okay. for, for their affairs. Mm. And the money comes in to fund city government, roughly half from the state government and half from the property tax and other permits and fees. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> and so out of this half a billion dollar budget, um, the kinds of services that uh, the city uh, is is responsible to the citizenry to perform. Uh, you know, what what <coughs> should we expect? I mean, that's a that, that to me is a pretty large budget for an 18 square mile city that only has approximately 120 thousand people in it. Well, you should expect perfection or near perfection. That's your money, that's going, and your money, uh, the taxpayers' money. That's going to fund City Hall and fund the government, and you should demand and expect perfection, and uh, should demand demand and expect honesty, transparency, and accountability, uh, and you should expect uh, fairness. In other words, uh, everybody should be treated equally uh, at City Hall. But even now, they're claiming <clears throat> we're in such lean times. I mean, you know, they're claiming that uh, you know we can't. Uh, we have to be concerned about uh, the efficiency of government because the money isn't there, uh, you know. And I'm just, I'm just wondering how they arrive at that conclusion with a half a billion dollar budget. How many employees now are we talking about uh, who are in security? And I know we have public safety. Uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, roughly 500 or so uh, man, you know, police force. 
sort of thing. I don't know what the numbers are inside of the school system, but I mean, how many people are we talking about? And 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 looking at what we're we're getting for the half a billion dollars or so that's being spent <laughs> annually for services in the city of Hartford, uh, I, I personally uh, am am very disappointed. Uh, I just I just think that uh, it's subpar, and certainly has not lived up to uh, this a standard that uh, one would hope in a city the size of Hartford. What do you think they should be doing? Well, I just believe that uh, it, we sh we shouldn't have to, uh, uh, you know, worry about th those th those things that happen on a day to day ba uh, basis. Uh, uh, you know, uh, safety <laughs> comes to mind right away. Uh, right. You know, that's a big issue, obviously, for most of us. Uh, you know, I I think that if you know, uh, you know. People are intimidated and don't feel as if they, uh, you know, their government and city government is functioning the way that it's supposed to. Then that plays out in the streets as well. I think others take a look at what's happening within the, this democracy and the political system and say to themselves, you know, there's no there's no fairness there either. You right. know, so how how can I <clears throat> how can I expect uh, you know, how can you expect for me to abide by those rules when others aren't adhering to them? Well, that, that's a good point. And the other point, too, is that uh, there are budget constraints. There's been um, less money from the state, either through the ECS uh, or through other grants uh, coming to Hartford. Uh, uh, we're facing, I believe, somewhere in the order of 50, 60, 70 million dollar deficit this coming year, mm -hmm. for which I've heard that for which Hartford will have to tighten its belts if if that's the case, and it is true we have lean times <clears throat> in the state in the revenue collection to them, and we get Hartford gets its money a lot of its money from state from the state approximately 50 percent of its uh, budget, um, and the Fed Feds are collecting less money for their needs, and we Hartford does get a lot of grant money uh, from them for various projects. So it will mean husbanding Hartford's money in a more efficient way, so that the services for which you were complaining about can be done in a much more efficient manner. And you're right; the, one of the things that that um, the city should offer <coughs> is <coughs> safety. <clears throat> and a police force, um, I believe there's a little over, I think about 550 officers or somewhere around there. Um, and I know that they have community policing. And I know that there's a shooting task force that is uh, city's part of, but also that's also uh, the state operation, although they're lodged in Hartford, that it's trying to do something about the gun violence. Because uh, vigils alone, while nice, uh, is after the fact, the meaning after somebody's died. Absolutely. And we got to do something preactive so that they don't happen in the first place, so that Reverend Brown doesn't have to convene a vigil. Well, and I don't mean, and I don't <coughs> mean to su suggest anything uh, other than public safety <coughs> is, uh, in me, in my opinion, priority for any city. If right. you if you don't have public safety, quite frankly, you don't have a city. And I'm not trying to, you know micromanage in any way, shape, or form, but it would seem to me that you could expect a certain standard, a certain, you know, level of effectiveness within any, uh, within any city government based upon the revenues, based upon uh, the resources that uh, are given to, you know, that particular municipality. But let me say this, uh, you know, keeping parks clean, uh, you know, uh, Free of, of of litter and uh, uh, free of uh, of uh, who knows um, uh, vagrants, if you will. Uh, you know, allowing people, you know, to enjoy <laughs> those kinds of things. And I'm not saying, you know, because those those things happen in, in any other city. Uh, but those are issues to me that could that could be addressed. Uh, 
I would think could be addressed, certainly with the amount of money that we have. And, uh, you know, certainly last but not least, and maybe uh, these aren't prioritized correctly, but the education within the city of Hartford, you know, the product that's being produced, uh, you know, uh, the people who are coming out of public education specifically, but in a lot of areas within education, to me, for a city that has a half a billion dollar budget, uh, you, you know, I think your audit department and the audit commission could um, could work from now until um, the cows came home and, and be uh, trying to fix most of what's happening within within the city of Hartford, because uh, quite frankly, it 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 has led to uh, us having less confidence, if you will, in city government and in government's ability to perform. Well, <clears throat> I agree. Uh, uh, that happens when uh, things are exposed to the public. Uh, uh, but the good news is that when nothing is swept under the rug and things are exposed, that gives City Hall and the public the opportunity to weigh in and shape how things are changed. The greater problem to me is when things are swept under the rug and you never see them and they fester and get worse. Right. I'd much rather have a system that we have now, which is an aggressive audit uh, agency who is not afraid to um, get in there and audit the tough stuff and to uh, um, make it public so that the city hall can run more efficiently and the public can weigh in to demand change. And I think that's a really healthy thing for our democracy. I, I agree with that. <coughs> and, and frankly, uh, you know, I applaud the efforts of uh, the auditors and, and the commission to this point because I think uh, the reluctance uh, to send the, uh, the message, if you will, that um, uh, malfeasance, uh, misconduct, uh, those kinds of things will not and cannot be tolerated. If we're all to participate in this democracy, it, it needs to be completely transparent and fair so everybody uh, knows what's going on is exactly what we need uh, in this day and time. And it sounds like to me, Commissioner Rubenstein, that that's uh, part of what you're trying to, to demonstrate. Yes. <clears throat> We're trying to demonstrate a, a transparency and an accountability. One of the ways to do it is to have uh, neutral, objective audits uh, where we have no preconceived outcome, uh, no preconceived opinions, no preconceived ideas, and go in and audit a particular department or a particular program uh, and to do it fairly uh, so that and render a report that is public and is um, available under the Freedom of Information Go where the facts take you. And go where the facts and the evidence takes us. Mm -hmm. So that the citizens, uh, the viewers, can participate in the process and demand change. Well, <clears throat> I, I think that we ought to, uh, you know, plan to hear more from uh, you and the audit department. I think, uh, uh, you know, not enough can be said about what's happening because we all need to be, uh, I think, uh, informed, especially about some of those remedies uh, and the conclusions that those audits come up with. We're not done. Uh, you know, the, the compliance for vendors who do business with the city, to me, is a big issue. I don't know what it takes to trigger that, uh, that audit. I, hopefully, uh, somebody from city council uh, you know, can can make the request, or even from the general public can make the request, because I think <clears> that <throat> will change uh, the landscape a lot more so. And I think that uh, you know, knowing uh, that you guys are 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 there and are willing to make the tough decisions, regardless, uh, makes a big difference as well. Uh, I can't thank you enough for for taking the time and coming by. Uh, to spend with us, uh, to share with us this information, Commissioner. I uh, I don't want to leave anything out. If there's something I've left out and uh, you, you felt we, we could or should have covered, 
that I didn't mention. Uh, now's the time. You got the floor. Oh. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate uh, the ability the, uh, that you gave me to come here, speak to you, speak to the citizens about what we do. Uh, and I can only say that um, uh, we're going to try to undertake the public's business, because that's what this is, uh, in a fair, neutral way so, uh, to make sure that city government is accountable and uh, has transparency and fairness for everybody. Well, this has <laughs> been the audit. Uh, we hope that you have uh, uh, taken notes and have uh, found that the information coming from a primary source uh, is indeed reliable and is indeed uh, what we can expect uh, from our city government, uh, from those folks who we elect to uh, protect and serve. Uh, the audit uh, has been a special report uh, here in the capital city of, of Connecticut and uh, Commissioner Rubenstein has been our guest. Uh, indeed, indeed, a gentleman and a scholar, uh, someone who uh, has my respect uh, and certainly uh, I hope he continues to keep doing what he does. Uh, we need you. Uh, you know, the city needs you. The process needs you. And your contribution to the process uh, is invaluable. Uh, we have to leave you now, but uh, we're going to plan to follow up, if that's okay with you, Commissioner. We're, with me. Yeah, we're going to follow up, and we're going to talk some more about the specific findings and conclusions that come from uh, these audits, and we're going to find out what's being done and uh, where those remedies are leading us to and what specific changes uh, we can expect uh, because of... Uh, uh, the findings from those audits. Thank you again for tuning in. Uh, we look forward to the next time. Uh, we hope that you all uh, will have a great day uh, and the very best to all who have taken the time uh, to listen to this report.